welcome to a new weekly vlog. Um, there is so freaking much to talk about this week and to tell you guys. If you have not seen my most uh, recent videos, I think, we do have a cat now. Kelsifer is here. Um, so there's probably going to be a lot of kitten stuff in this vlog that I will just try to leave timestamps below if you want to skip. He is currently sleeping underneath the tripod because I just filmed a video. Um, but he has been a literal perfect, perfect angel. And I just want to say, first of all, a huge thank you guys to anyone who left tips on my book haul video with him because they are literally just so, so appreciated. Um, so very quick update on all that stuff. Yes, sadly, I did have to get rid of a lot of my plants. I know that maybe training him to leave them alone would have been okay, but just right now, while he's so little um, and he's just a kitten, I did not want to take any chances. So I gave my plants to, most of them went to my partner's mom, who's really good with plants. And then I gave a couple of them to my mom and my grandma took my most colorful plants was what she requested. So like the anthurium and the polka dot plant. Um, so everyone has new homes, but I do have thankfully a lot of plants left. Kelsifer had his first vet visit yesterday which went really well. He was a literal angel at the vet's office. He literally fell asleep on her table. He didn't care about the shots. He ate the dewormer so happily um, and he has to go back in another three weeks for more shots but he was fine in the vet's office but getting there and coming home in his carrier in the car he was so so upset. He has maybe a little bit of separation anxiety or something like that because anytime we tried to leave um, anytime we try to just go out for a little bit, it started the other day when we went to the gym at night or tried to because we usually leave the house when he's sleeping just because that's how it's worked out so far. Um, I mean, we both work from home right now, so we're both home every day, but we tried to go to the gym the other night and we, as soon as we closed the door, we stepped into the hallway and we heard him like run into the door. Um, and we were out there for three seconds and he just started yelling, screaming, crying like a child. He was like knocking at the door, pawing under it, trying to get his paws under the door. Um, and not like a nice meow. It was a completely different meow. And then we heard him make and it just, it broke my heart because he was just crying and crying and crying. It was like a cat alarm had gone off and it was just so loud. Like we could hear it down the hall. I'm sure the neighbors could hear it. Um, so we obviously had to go back in and then we eventually put him in the closet in my walk-in bathroom and closet and left him in there with all his toys and food and water and we were only gone for like 15 minutes but um, we're gonna have to work on that a lot. We did try to do it as well at um, night just closing the bedroom door because it's just it's just better for him to be out there at night. That is his spot. I don't know if you can see him. He's currently sleeping. He just likes to sleep under the bed at night which I guess we're just gonna let him do for now because yeah he sleeps through the night. He's been literal angel like behavior except for <laughs> the whole freak out when we're not around but he sleeps under there and he doesn't wake up like i think sometimes he is awake but he doesn't actually get up until we get out of bed which is crazy he just lays under there until we wake up with him in the morning so yeah those are the few updates on calcifer but we have got a lot of new stuff for him around so maybe i will show you the toys and things because i'm just so excited i'm literally so excited to just throw money continuously at this cat i've saved up I feel like I've saved up my whole life to just spoil this cat. This is probably my favorite thing that we've got him. It is a scratching post. I'll try to link everything down below. We'll see if it works this time. But yeah, I just love this. They're little mushrooms and he loves it so much. Um, and then yeah, this is his carrier that we got. So it's really nice. It opens from the top as well. Um, and then there's just, there's just toys everywhere. My grandma got him this scratching post. So he has two. He loves this box so much. And then we did get him this bed, which he used, I think the first couple of days he was here, but he hasn't really been sleeping in it recently. Honestly, I would just, I just want to use it as a pillow because it's so soft. And then this is the little bowl set we got him. So he already ate today. Um, he's been eating a mix. We just started feeding him wet food today, incorporating that because he's been eating a mix of the pet curian this is the cat drawer by the way <laughs> um this is the one we got him the pet curian go now fresh and then the wet food so far has been warupa which he really really likes before we get things too far along i wanted to take a quick drink break i almost said brick drink and thank audible for sponsoring today's video i freaking love when audible sponsors my videos thank you you've heard of them before but have you listened to them yet you should because audible is the leading provider 
of spoken word entertainment, but it's not just audiobooks. They also have podcasts. They also have sleep tracks. They have some ASMR, like they have different ones. They have ones where people narrate stories in really beautiful voices. As an Audible member, you get one credit each month, which lets you purchase one audiobook. You get to keep this audiobook for forever, even if you delete or cancel your membership, like you still have it there to listen to. My audiobook library is full. So many new selections get added to Audible each month, which means that there's just so many new things of value to discover. Like you can just spend endless hours. I wanted to recommend an old favorite audiobook, which I've honestly been considering re-listening to, and that is The Thief by Fuminori Nakamura. This is such a noir, super edgy, but also so much more than that. It's about this guy who's a pickpocket, but it's more about like his identity and why he chooses to assimilate himself to the life of a pickpocket, and it's so devastating, but it's also such a good listen. It's so short. You could probably listen to it in just a couple nights if you really wanted to, so I would highly recommend The Thief. So if you guys are interested, new members can try Audible free for 30 days. You can visit audible.com slash Emmy, or you can text Emmy, E-M-M-I-E, to 500-500 to start your free trial today. Good evening. So it's now Saturday night, and I have a bunch of reading updates to tell you guys. I am in the biggest... Here's the thing, I'm in the biggest reading mood. I literally feel like I wanna do like a 24 hour readathon right now. Um, I'm not going to, but I feel like I could. But the thing is that I have a bunch of books. So here's the um, physical currently reading list. So I have a bunch of books on the go, which is great, but none of them I'm particularly thrilled about, especially because um, some of them are for school, some of them are for book clubs, and the ones that I am reading aren't really what I'm craving right now. So I think I'm definitely gonna start probably something else tonight. I also went book shopping today with a few of my best friends because they came over to see Calcifer. Um, they're no longer interested in me, that's completely fair, but then we went book shopping and I did buy one book, so I'll show you that too. But this is the pile, so let's start with the oldest on the stack. That is The Old Curiosity Shop by Charles Dickens, and God, I wish this was over. I am so done with this book. I totally would have DNF'd it if it weren't for the book club and I just, I really cannot stress to you how much I'm not liking this. So incredibly boring. Oh my gosh, so incredibly boring. Like, I don't know. I don't know what Dickens is doing. I really don't. I was talking to Carolyn last night and we were talking about how like, I think this was at the point in his career where he was struggling with his readership because I don't think people were really loving his works. And like, I can see why, because this one, I really feel like it has lost the Dickens-ness. Dickens this whole book has just been Nell and her grandfather moving from place to place to place, wandering around, trying to find somewhere that isn't gonna lead to them being hunted by creditors and people trying to get her grandfather's money, of which he actually has none. Her grandfather also struggles with a very bad gambling addiction. God, so boring, I'm so sorry. I just could not care less what is happening, which is a big surprise because I'm usually so enthralled with Dickens, but this time around, I just, I want it to be over so badly. I'm currently on page 416. I think I have a little bit over 100 pages to go, so I'll be hopefully finishing this up very soon because yikes. If anyone is liking this, please like give me, give me one reason. I just need one reason to like something in here. My favorite character is probably Kit. Um, I do know how this book ends as well. It was spoiled for me a while ago, but like I honestly don't care. That's the unfortunate update. This might actually be is this now my least favorite Dickens? The Pickwick Papers, I think, previously have that spot, but at least in the Pickwick Papers, like, I was still laughing a lot. None. There's been no laughing. There's been barely any humor. It's missing so much of, like, his fantastical, whimsical description, um, and it's really just quite plain for Dickens, which is astounding. So that is that one, sadly. <laughs> Um, the book that I've been physically reading for a long time and then I'm now kind of coming to the point where I'm like I kind of want to be done this is definitely The Body Keeps the Score. You guys know I've been reading this over a long period of time and now at the point where I'm at in the book we've kind of moved away from the topics that I was more excited to discuss because the beginning of this book is so good. I highlighted so much and it talked more about the brain itself but now we've kind of moved into treatment and therapy and stuff which is really interesting. But this is more stuff that I think is not, I want to say common knowledge, but more just stuff that I know. Um, whereas the really cool sciencey part was at the beginning and I was finding that really interesting and actually very helpful. I'm going to finish this. I think I have, again, probably 100 pages left. So we'll see what happens with that. But I'm just not in the mood to read nonfiction right now. I'm in the mood to read like hot trash. I really want to read hot trash or just some fun, like very easy fiction. And then <laughs> I did start reading like right before my vacation, Descartes. 
um, a discourse on the method because I was just, I want, I don't know. I was like, I want to read Descartes. I want to read some philosophy. I read this much, but I'm technically only eight pages into Descartes' work in general because um, the whole first half of the book is just introduction. I think Descartes' part is only 60 pages maybe, but I think what I'm gonna do now, since I haven't picked this up in a few weeks, is just start over from his part and then keep going and see see what's up with that because I was really interested in this. So that is that guy, but once again, <laughs> not in the mood to read either of these right now. I wanna sit down with like a story. An audiobook that I've been listening to since I got back from my trip that I have just been constantly on the fence about whether to DNF it or not and in the end I decided to finish it so I finished it today but like I honestly probably should have just DNF'd it was Aurora Burning by Jay Kristoff and Amy Kaufman. I'm so heartbroken about this. If anyone else is reading this series, this is their other young adult sci-fi. You might know these authors because they wrote The Illuminae Files which is my favorite young adult sci-fi. I think you, The Illuminae Files is just literally outstanding, spectacular, explosive, just so amazing and like top tier entertainment as well. Whereas unfortunately the Aurora Academy, is it called the Aurora Academy um, series is just so lackluster is a very good word. It feels like it's missing something is all I can say. And even if I'm not like riveted by the characters or by the writing, which I even feel has fallen off in this book, the plotting is kind of off, the pacing is off for me. I really feel like this book just is missing a spark at its core that is keeping it alive. It's like a dying star. Um, and I really should have DNF'd this because it was quite long. Even the audiobook narrators were really giving it like all they had and it's a full cast production. So it should be at least entertaining. But once again, it was just so boring, unfortunately. I don't know if I'm gonna end up finishing the series. Um, June for me has been the month where I've just been reading series, which feels really good because I have so many on the go. Um, I wanna update my Notion. Um, my Notion page where I keep track of all that. So maybe I'll show you guys that and do that with you too. But um, yeah, in the end, I think I gave this two and a half stars. I'm really, really upset about it because it just, it just does not stand at all next to Illuminae. I don't know what went wrong here. I think maybe they were just riding off the high from their first series and thought that they could pull it off again. Um, and I hoped, I really hoped that they could, but it did not, did not come off well. Um, so unfortunately that is that one. I think there's one more in the series. I think it's a trilogy as well, but damn, not a good one. I will talk more about that one in my wrap up and like what it's about, but I would just say maybe just, just stick with Illuminae and don't try their other series because I was very disappointed. So that leaves me with the two audiobooks that I've started in place of this one. So I have to read Huckleberry Finn by Mark Twain from my American Lit class. It's going about as well as you would expect. I have never, never in my life have I been like, I want to read Mark Twain. Like that's just not been, it's not been an urge I've ever had. Uh, I'm sorry, Mark Twain. Can I call you Samuel? Um, it's never something I wanted and much less reading Huckleberry Finn. I don't know why I have such a preconceived aversion to Huckleberry Finn. All I know is that it exists in my mind and I really do not want to pick this up. Thankfully, I did find an audio version and I've started that and I am just, I don't know if it's those notions that I had about the book, but I am not liking it at all. Um, so we'll see, we'll see how this is gonna go. I think I got 10 pages through and I was like, I don't really want to be here. But this audiobook as well, I started this while I was deliberating on DNFing Aurora Burning. Um, and that's Homegoing by Yaa Jessie, if I'm saying that right. That's what the audiobook person pronounced um, her name, but please correct me if I'm wrong. This was a gift from one of you guys. Thank you so much. I'm finally getting around to it. Um, I have wanted to read this for a while and it did capture my attention when I started the audiobook. So I think this might be the next audiobook I pick up, like just for my own. Um, my own reading, but basically we follow two girls who are from the same village. Essentially, they lead two very different lives because one girl gets married to an Englishman who stays in her village or somewhere close by and he moves into like this very prestigious um, castle, it's called. The other girl who gets, I believe, captured as a slave and then taken to um, the US. Then it follows the lineage of both of these women. I don't know. I don't know. I'm just not having the most stellar time ever with any of these yet, but we'll see. We'll see what happens. So I think the plan is I'm going to get through my 10 pages of Dickens and then uh, I have to listen to Huckleberry Finn, but I really don't want to. I just want to push that off. 
as far as humanly possible. Okay, so this is the book that I got. It is A Winter's Promise by Christelle Davos. Um, I've been wanting to read this for a really long time. I have just been the absolute most obsessed ice book hoarder in the Seven Kingdoms. Like, that's all I want to do is collect books about winter and snow and Christmas. I know. Um, so I'm obviously not going to read this anytime soon. This is going right on my um, ice, <laughs> my celebratory ice snow shelf, but I really hope this is good. This is, I think, young adult, um, and it's a fantasy about this girl named Ophelia who lives on, like, this arc, I guess is what it is, and she is supposed to marry this guy from, like, the icy northern climate, um, but she also has powers of being able to travel through mirrors, and she has something else. What is the other one? Um, oh, she can see into an object's past, which is pretty cool too. So I'm hoping this is good. I've kind of heard mixed reviews, but I just want to collect everything wintry. Um, you guys know that's like, oh my god, I just can't explain to you how much it makes me happy and how much I love it. But that is what I got. It is like 4.30 on Sunday. I've been really good with caffeine consumption lately. I've just been alternating between kind of working, kind of reading, and honestly just laying in bed because I'm so tired. I've been staying up really late the past few nights, mostly just because I've had a lot of YouTube stuff that I need to get done. Um, it's kind of just been all piled up from when I went on the trip and took a longer break than I really meant to, um, but I think I'm mostly caught up. I'm almost caught up. I have a video, this video actually, <laughs> that I need to edit today. Yesterday's book shopping inspired me. I did place a book order, which I haven't really done <laughs> in a while, in which I had put myself on a buying ban, but they, when I went to chapters with my friends, the books that I actually wanted to get, they didn't have in stock, so I just ordered them, and I think they're coming tonight or anytime this afternoon, and I'm really excited because that's kind of the next one I want to start but I might pick one off my shelves and then save. I'll show you the books that I got when they get here, but I'm kind of saving them for something and I might start something with one of them that I really want to include you guys in. Also, since coming back from the mountains, my skin has been so bad. Like before I left, I had kind of gotten into a good routine with it and um, I was hardly getting any new like acne, which was so good. Um, but ever since I came back and the first few days I was here, it was up to a humidex of like 30, I don't know, mid 30s, high 30s. And it was just disgusting. Like the humidity was like a brick wall outside. It's cooled down a lot in the past few days. So I get to wear sweatpants, which I'm very happy about. But yeah, my skin has not, I don't know if you can actually see. I mean, I don't really want to show you because I'm a little self-conscious. More than that, it's just like my whole face is just painful. Um, so I'm hoping this is just like a period of transition. My coffee maker is having a party over there, but yeah, I've just not wanted to wear makeup because it's just going to make it worse. If you live in a very humid, wet, um, sticky, extremely hot climate and you already have oily skin, what do you use? Um, because I'm almost out of a few of my products and I don't know. I just, I'm looking, I'll try anything. I will try anything at this point. Okay, so I just thought that I would clean a little bit while I listen to Huckleberry Finn. But then, as I was cleaning, my books came. So we're gonna open them together. So the first one that I got, so happy about this, is, oh my god, it's here, is volume two of Hunter x Hunter. Look at how beautiful. I just love, oh, I just love it. It's gorgeous. So I have been wanting to get my hands on this ever since a wonderful subscriber named Emma, thank you so much, sent me the first volume to my PO box. This is also one of my best friends favorite things in the whole wide world. And I finished volume one, I think back in March, April, one of those, but I was so pleasantly surprised. I loved it, I loved it so much. So I was hoping I would be able to find this yesterday at Chapters, but they didn't have it. So I ordered volume two and here it is. Look at them. Oh my gosh, I'm just so happy. So I'm probably gonna start this immediately. I might start this immediately um, because I really, really want to see what happens next. I tried watching the anime, but I honestly feel like, oh, look at this. I just love this. I honestly feel like I might just want to read the whole thing instead of watching it and then maybe watch it. But essentially this is set in a world where there are people called hunters who, um, they do a bunch of things. They have to take a very prestigious test to be able to be a hunter. So we follow Gon, who's this young boy who wants to be a hunter because his father was one um, and you follow him taking this test. And of course there's a whole bunch of other people, but essentially they are like 
treasure hunters, general helpers of people. I think they are experts in the beasts that roam this land and so like if they need to either protect them or protect humans or anything like that, a hunter is someone you call because this world is full of creatures that are just unpredictable and huge but i just thought the first one was so clever so fun so impressive um so much depth in it already and you guys did warn me that the series is currently on a hiatus i believe the artist is currently sick unfortunately he's also the husband of naoko takuchi who is the creator of sailor moon i also read somewhere that like she is learning his art style so that she can help him write and continue the series which is just so kind um but so thrilled. This next one, I'm so excited. Oh. Okay, it has begun. So I ordered the first Haruki Murakami novel that he wrote. This is actually the bind up of the two first novels. So we have Hear the Wind Sing, and then this also includes um, Paintball 1973. Oh, okay, that is so cool. I need to take this sticker off. That's so fun. Is it like, Oh, it is. Okay, so you read Pinball this way, and then of course you read Hear the Wind Sing this way. I wonder where it cuts off. Oh, okay, so they're two super short novels. You guys know I've been saying for so long that I have wanted to start this thing where I read Murakami in uh, publication order, and I think it's happening. It's happening now. Stay calm, everyone. Stay calm. I would love to organize a readathon. Um, I will probably start this in the next few days, so I'm gonna be reading it really slowly. And that's why I have not been reading any Murakami since. Oh, geez. I am so ashamed to say this. I think the last one I read was After Dark, which was in 2020. So this has been a long time coming, but I'm so excited to finally have this in my hands. For a long time, it was out of stock everywhere. Um, but I finally have it. I don't know what either of these novels are about. So the first one here, The Wind Sing, is a powerful, at times surreal story about two young men coming of age. An unnamed narrator returns to his hometown for summer break, which he mostly spends drinking and smoking um, as the long, hot days roll by and the radio plays a steady stream of Elvis and the Beach Boys. He reflects on women and writing. Okay, well, there are some unfortunate things in Murakami, and I think that's gonna be very prevalent in his earlier works, but I'm ready, I'm ready for it. Okay, and then Pinball 1973 is a strange story of alienation, infatuation, and obsession. Listless and unsatisfied, he renews his old fascination with pinball and embarks on a quest to locate the legendary pinball machine he's played on at the bar, oh, years before. Okay, so there are two novels about the same person. Those are the two books that I bought, so. Yes, I just, they're so shiny. Just so shiny. Ah, books. Okay. Anyway, so I'm going to finish cleaning, finish listening to Huckleberry Finn. Every second, I'm only, how long am I? I'm only an hour and nine minutes through the audiobook and I'm hanging on by a thread. This has been like a very bizarre thing that's been happening to me. Not bizarre. It's just, it, it is what it is. But um, he makes me so emotional like i literally was just editing in my room um and i came out to see him because he's been sleeping for a while and i just start crying i don't know what it is i think because i am going through um just having like a lot of feelings recently and there's a lot of things going on um i have some more very exciting news i'll probably be sharing with you guys very soon um, and it's just been really good letting you guys in a little bit more to my life. Obviously, I've stopped calling my boyfriend my roommate, um, and I did want to talk a little bit about that, but this, oh, this pimple right between my eyebrows is like, it's like becoming a headache at this point, but, um, yes, I do have a partner. We're both very happy. I will spare you all the long, boring details, but we were best friends for a very long time, um, before we started being in a relationship. Some of you guys guessed that um, a while ago, but yeah, we were just really good friends for a long time and we're both just just very happy about it and I'm just excited to let um, that part of my life a little bit out because I don't think he'll be appearing in any of my videos. One, because he's very camera shy and two, just because like I love, I love privacy. We both really value privacy. I think that's important and um, I'm just like quite protective of, um, this little, I don't know, this little family we've got going now. I don't know why. I don't know. If anyone else, when you get 
a new addition to your family, it's it's just felt so overwhelming in really good ways, obviously. I just, I wanna do everything right. I want to make him the happiest cat in the world. And it's just like an overwhelming feeling of love, I think, but also, you know, things are different. Things have changed a little bit, bringing a new being into your life. Let's go back to my room so I can stop <laughs> tearing up because he's in the vicinity. I've had this like such a, such a huge like protective thing for him, even though literally nothing is gonna happen to this cat. That's the other thing I wanna talk about with his whole, with his whole like separation thing from us. We've tried to do it at night a little bit, like I was saying at the start of this vlog, um, as well to train him because the vet said like, it, it'll be good to give him increased time away from you guys because the vet was just like, he just really likes you. He's really bonded to you. Um, and so he doesn't wanna be away. He will just sit at the closed bedroom door and scream. He even does it sometimes now when my partner uses the washroom, he'll just sit outside and yell constantly. Like, like he just sits there and as soon as you open the door for him, like he just zooms in and like runs into you, bashes his head affectionately against your legs and like just wants to be all over you. And he just kind of spends the day now like following one or the other of us around. I don't know why, I just love him so much. I've been feeling so emotionally fragile these past, this past week, not just over Kelsifer, but because of other things that are um, happening, which I will let you know very soon. They are, they are good things. They are. Yeah, so I just wanted to give you a little um, emotion update. I'm also very glad that I can share these things with you guys. It means um, the literal world to me. Like it really, really does. This YouTube thing, um, and you guys are literally the YouTube thing, is fantastic. And that's the other thing, we just hit 300, thousand three hundred thousand subscribers today so thank you so much i would love to know how you guys are what you guys are doing um what you've been up to as usual please like literally just leave me a summary of your week below in the comments if that's what you want to do i would i would really love that it's just like every time i you know i'm working for a couple hours and he takes a nap and i come out and i like see him again and i'm reminded that i have a cat which i cannot tell you how many years i've been waiting for this moment um i just break down like i've really just been breaking down kelsifer is my first cat but when i was about 10 years old there was a stray cat who came into the neighborhood and the neighborhood basically took him in as their cat and his name was ozzy um, I still sometimes see him. The last time I saw him was the summer when the pandemic started and at that point he would have been at least 12 years old, 13 years old, if not more because he wasn't a kitten when, when we found him and he used to live sometimes just in a box on our back deck even in the winter with like blankets and stuff because we couldn't bring him in because my parents were so allergic um, but I just loved that cat so much. I hope he's still alive. I hope he's still out there. And I just always had wished I could bring him fully into my life. And I think I'm like weirdly experiencing this like flood of emotions that like 10 year old Emma didn't get, if that makes sense, probably doesn't. But that cat was just like so patient and so loving with me. Like when I was 10 one day, I like vividly remember was that I decided that I wanted to be a cat for the day, like live the life of a cat. And so I literally spent the whole day following Ozzy around the neighborhood, crawling into wherever he crawled into because I was not very big. Um, and he literally just let me follow him around. Something I think I've just realized is that like, I'm feeling a lot of those feelings that I never really got to experience fully or fully process because of course, like our relationship kind of just fizzled out as he got permanently adopted by one of my neighbors who didn't live like right next door. She lived on the other side. Um, and of course I was home less and less and we both grew up kind of bringing a lot of that back. Plus I just love Kelsifer so much. This has been a time. I'm glad we went through that together. Last thing I want to do is show you my notion for the series I've been reading. Okay, so this is the other thing that I wanted to update. So essentially, I have been reading a lot of book series um, in June, so I thought we could update this together. So I've just listed like um, the title and then how many books are in it. We have Shatter Me. I do want to read Shatter Me. I'm going to be making... I've read the first uh, four. 
I'm going to be making a whole Shatter Me vlog. I will, because I want to read all of the books in the Shatter Me world. If you don't know, there are six, but Tahara Mafi also releases a novella in between each book. Anyway, we'll talk about this in that vlog once I get around to it. Frostblood is the next one I have on here. I don't know if that's what the series is actually called. I just put a hold on the third book, which is called Nightblood. Um, it is the most basic YA fantasy series. I still want to finish it. Okay, then what do we have? Okay, so here it is. The Aurora Cycle. That's the one I made progress on in this vlog. I had currently one out of three. Now we're at two out of three. Um, I don't know, should I burn that off of this list is what I want to ask. Um, I possibly, probably should. Hunter x Hunter is one I'm going to make progress on very soon. I currently have down that there's 30 volumes. Um, I don't know where I got that information from. It's unfinished as well, right? So it really should just be a question mark. And then, oh, the Broken Earth um, series by... Um, uh, N.K. Jemisin. I just put the third book on hold for that as well, so that'll be another series you get to take off soon. I have not made progress on my series in so long. And then also this month, I finished a series, which was um, The Themis Files by Sylvain Nouvelle. That is officially the first series on this list that I have finished. That was a trilogy and it ended so poorly. I should have just stopped reading after the second one. I think I'm gonna leave you there. Um, I want to say thank you so much for watching, and again, thank you to Audible for sponsoring this video. The link is in the description if you want to give it a whirl, and I will see you when I see you. So until then, please keep well, please take care of yourself, and we are sending you so much love.